you got to get it while you have the chance because it's not going to be too much longer that you can get a fun, exciting, sounding good, easy to drive, relatively efficient V8 like this in a family hauler because things are going to downsize, things are going to go electric, and it's, it's, it's just not going to last forever. That, uh, that startup was a little less dramatic than I expected, but I wanted to start the video this way because this is one of the few cars that I actually think splurging and, and kind of being a little, um, a little silly is worth it. it I, I think it's a good idea. I don't usually say that. Usually I'm a very pragmatic, practical sort of person. I was the one who when we reviewed the Corolla, I said, like, well, why would you get the cool red one with the with the two-tone and all the features and everything like that? It only makes sense to get a Corolla if you're getting the basic one, you know? But this is a truck that I actually think, I think opposite. Let me shut it off for you here. We'll take a little bit more of a look around. Double tap the key, turn the engine back off. So this is a special version of the Tahoe. It's the RST model. And it, not only is it the RST, but it's got the RST performance package. So you're looking at a little bit of extra horsepower, not enough for you to really notice it. We're rocking the 6.2, the big V8, which we'll talk about here once we get driving it. I, I've got a lot to say about that engine. But you've also got an intake on it and an exhaust. Let's take a quick look at the exhaust. It looks cool. We've got these shiny tips. And as you heard earlier, it sounds good. It also sounds good while driving, which we're going to see in a moment. You've also got police spec tires, Firestone Firehawk Pursuits, it says right there. A lot of people are gonna appreciate that. And they're on 20 inch wheels instead of the 22s that you get on a lot of other Tahoes and Suburbans and trucks these days. I think that actually improves the ride quality. And you've got cop brakes. So for those of you who don't know, the Tahoes that get put into police duty, those things are pushed really, really hard, in fact, I've got a friend, his name is Sean, who helps develop this generation Tahoe PPV, the pursuit vehicle, and they go out to Grattan Raceway with the Michigan State Police in, in Michigan, and they beat the heck out of these things. They hoon them, and the vehicles, whether it's the ones from Ford or from Chevy or Dodge or whomever, they have to be able to withstand a, a beating around the track. It's something like 20 laps at this technical race, uh, race course with elevation and everything, and by the end, the brakes are typically totally cooked, they're on fire, but the vehicle has to still perform and, and, and be able to hold out. So the fact that we're running this, uh, a lot of this hardware on the, the civilian spec, I think it's smart for GM to do that, and I think it's pretty cool as well. Although a little side note, I do know some insider baseball that the Michigan State Police typically just run snow tires all year round on their vehicles because if they're gonna have to switch to winter tires at some point anyway, it's cheaper for them to just run them down to the nubbins during the summer, which is a little strange. So I don't know if they'd actually be running these Firestone uh, Firehawk pursuits, but this is probably how GM provides the car to the state police and then the state police just throws winters on there in the fall. Outside of the cool performance stuff, this is, this is a Tahoe. I mean, there's no huge surprises, but this is such a bread and butter sort of vehicle for General Motors that it doesn't surprise me that so many of the things I've experienced while using the truck throughout the week lend themselves, I shouldn't use the word things, my English teacher would be disappointed, so many of the elements of the truck lend themselves to ease of use and to family usage. So if you're getting a truck like this and choosing not to get a minivan, uh, make sure you're using it. Make sure you're uh, getting something like this because you need the space and you need the abilities because this thing is not cheap. And that's why I think it makes sense to simply pony up a little bit more. You're, you got to spend at least $55,000 to just get yourself into a Tahoe. So pony up more. Sp spend the money to get the cool engine that's not going to last very long and uh, enjoy yourself a little bit. Treat yourself, if you will. There's all sorts of other videos that'll tell you all the things about the interior features, but uh, nothing really notable for me out back here other than it's a pretty high load surface. If you really, really pony up for the high countries think maybe the Z71 as well you can get an optional air suspension which will lower it down in the back make it a little easier but this one does have power fold third row that seems to get a little caught there if you don't fold the second 
Second row is kind of just that manual release, and then you can get the third row all the way down. Gives you quite a lot of room. Alyssa and I were actually able to put some bookshelves in the back of here, some pretty tall ones, so that was nice to have that. Third row comes back up with power. Second row does not. You gotta go back there and do it yourself. Power lift gate, of course. Capless fuel filler, this has been nice. But also you see premium fuel is recommended, especially if you're ponying up to get the RST, getting a little extra horsepower and everything. I would just run regular if you were simply cruising on the highway, but daily driving, or especially if you're towing anything, you're gonna wanna put premium in there to get the most out of the engine. You can flip these seats all the way up, make it really easy to get into the back. There's plenty of room back there, even for full-size adults. Cup holders, USB ports, a few speakers in the D-pillar. Put that, as you can see, I'm able to do it pretty much just with one hand, a little bit of force, but that's a good sign. I can't slide, oh, I can slide it back with one hand, but it really takes some effort. This one has the optional 12.6 inch displays back here for both second row passengers. I've got a breakdown on how to kind of function those, link in the description. We've also got rear zone climate control there with some heated outboard seats. USB-C ports and HDMIs. I know HDMIs are important for a lot of people with families. And we got some headphones in here as well. Look at that red cross stitching, that looks nice. Before we start it up, let's take a quick look at the engine because, now if this were just a standard Tahoe, I wouldn't even bother doing this, but this one's kind of cool because you see we've got that cold air intake right there or just air intake, whatever it is, it's performancey. And then one of my favorite engines on the market, 6.2 liter small block V8. This, regardless of its application, is a fantastic engine. The only one that I don't really care for it in is the C8 Corvette, just because it's a uh, bit rough nature, doesn't really match the precise driving experience in the C8. I much prefer the 5.5 liter for that car, but whether it be a truck, an SUV, older Corvette, Camaro, I love the 6.2. Another thing to note, look how wide open the second row doors go. Obviously a minivan would be easier with its sliding doors, but getting this nearly 90 degree opening is gonna make it pretty easy to get car seats in and out of. Coming inside, there's just a lot to make your life easy. A ton of buttons for getting to things really quickly. You've got your four wheel drive buttons over there. Power steering column with the performance package here. Of course, power adjusted seats. And a lot of places to put things. You know, I'm a big thing putting person. And in a family vehicle like this, you gotta have it. So storage there, storage here, storage there, storage down there. A Little bit of storage below. Little tiny, interesting little pocket right there for storage. You've got this strange little bit of storage there, a little bit of storage there, storage in here. Then if you press this button with the truck on, I guess, this whole thing slides. I believe this is an option, but it's not a very expensive option. It gets you even more storage. And then if that's not enough, ugh, even more. So there's a storage within a storage within a storage. I am all about it. The Tahoe, along with a lot of new Chevy products, are getting GM's excellent Android automotive-based infotainment system. It's one of my favorite on the market. I highly recommend uh, checking it out for yourself or at least watching our infotainment breakdown linked below if you do want to see more on how it works. But you got all sorts of inputs. You got a nine-speaker Bose sound system in here. Physical climate controls, I'm so glad they kept all of those. And a USB-A and USB-C down there. Take a look at this shifter. I think this is so smart. Some people are like, no, I wanna have a traditional style shifter. Why? So you can lose a whole bunch of practical space right in here? Why not this very intuitive push button system that is symmetrically built into the dash and very easy to simply reach in and use? You just press up and touch what you, what you need. Drive? Okay, there we go. How easy is that? As much as I am a fan of column shifters, this is even easier than a column shifter because column shifter you often miss the shift that you're going into. This simply works, and I really appreciate GM for sticking with that. We saw it in some GMC models. I'm glad to see it in this Chevy. Where are we gonna go today, Charlie? Well, we are going to head to the grocery store because by golly, why would you own one of these things if you weren't regularly stocking your pantry because of your hungry children? <laughs> And just pulling away like that, easing on the throttle, we're greeted with the cool sound between this intake and the exhaust. 
and this fantastic engine. 433 horsepower, you're not gonna really necessarily feel the difference between this and a standard 6.2 in the Tahoe unless you guys are neck and neck and your vehicles are loaded up the same way, racing off the line, but hey, it's cool to have a little bit extra on paper. But gosh, I just love the way that the 6.2 sounds. <laughs> I love the way it, it, it pulls. I love the way it acts even at lower speeds. And GM did such a fantastic job with their 10-speed automatic transmission that it's always in a good gear. The engine's got so much torque that it kind of doesn't matter what gear it's in. You're always good to go. And we tested it on our highway fuel economy test. And even though EPA gives this truck 18 mpg, I don't know if it's because of the tires or because of the performance upgrades or what, but we achieved 21 miles per gallon. You gotta realize the capability and the power of this vehicle and the sheer size of it, the fact we're able to squeeze out 21 mpg, that's, that's noteworthy, it really is. If you want to see us throw this thing around, you can check out the winding road video that'll go up at some point here where I push it, I hustle it, I mean it sounds good, it drives well, but realistically most people aren't going to be going out and thrashing their Chevy Tahoes, they just want something that's kind of fun to drive around and, and that's why, strangely enough, I think it's worth ponying up for this car a little bit. The performance package is something like $9,000 and while yeah, part of that is paying for the, uh, the, the exhaust and the intake and the tires and everything, a good part of it is also getting you the luxury package which is giving you the HD surround camera that works really, really well. You can see right here it's showing me, where are we at here, all around the truck. It's showing me cars going by, front, rear. That's super useful to have for a large vehicle like this, maneuvering around parking lots or driveways or anything like that. It's also giving you your power adjusted steering column, um, things like the Bose system. We got the dual zone climate control. It's giving you a lot of extra goodies. And ultimately, there's no cheap way to get a car like this new. I mean, if you got to transport large individuals and all of their stuff and all of their friends and maybe tow something fairly regularly and you're not settling with something used if you're, if you're getting on the used or the new market here you're gonna be ponying up there's no way around that and don't get me wrong i'm not telling you that the the difference between the eighty one thousand dollars for this car and the fifty six thousand dollars that you're going to start at for a base model truck I'm not saying that that isn't an insignificant gap. I mean, gosh, you could get your partner an entire vehicle new with the with that cost difference right there. But what I am saying is if you're deciding to go new, you're probably at the point in your life where you can justify it. You you are you've done used cars for a while. You've uh, you know, the kids are more grown up. You're maybe set for college or whatever. You've got some toys. You you want to justify the new car purchase. So Instead of simply just scraping into the base model that's not going to get you a very good sound system and it's not going to be very enjoyable to drive and you're going to be missing out on safety aspects, maybe it's worth spending a little extra, getting a little bit higher payment in order to get something that when you do drive it and you're going up a road like this and you lean into it, I mean, that's cool. That, that really makes it satisfying to drive this thing around and actually... You go, oh wow, I, I feel like I'm getting a lot of bang for my buck. I'm feeling like I'm having a, a fun experience even though all I'm doing is going to pick up the kids from school. <laughs> On top of that, how much longer are we going to get powertrains like this? I mean, the 6.2, I love it, but it's not gonna be around forever. There's going to be some sad day in my lifetime likely and probably yours if you're watching as well unless you're on your deathbed some point gm is going to announce that the 6.2 small block is going away and we're going to miss it in all of those products that we know and love so it's almost kind of like you gotta get it while you have the chance because it's not going to be too much longer that you can get a fun exciting sounding good easy to drive relatively efficient V8 like this in a family hauler because things are going to downsize, things are going to go electric, and 
it's, it's, it's just not going to last forever. So yeah, the 5.3 is good. The three liter diesel is an excellent option if you're doing a lot of towing or tons of mileage on the truck or something. But consider the V8, consider the big boy V8, the, the 6.2 liter. It, it does make this truck special. It would be really easy to take a look at the feature sheets, to get in one of these on a dealership lot or something, and and poo-poo it a little bit. Say, oh, well, I can get a lot more from a lot of other different products, and it's going to have a nicer interior, and oh, I think some of these plastics are cheap. You're right. You're right. I, I'll give it to you. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. But a lot of what the Tahoe does well, from, from the size of the vehicle to the way you feel driving it, it speaks to one of those intangible desires to, uh, to enjoy driving your vehicle. There's something cool about the presence of a full body on frame SUV like this, that you kind of come into a parking lot or you trundle over those speed bumps there and you, you know, turn this whole thing and it's, there's a satisfaction to it. And, and I gotta say, I get it. So a lot of times, it might not make the most sense, but again, treat yourself a little bit. Enjoy it, have fun in life, live a little, and maybe justify paying a little bit for the cool red paint and the performance exhaust. Our 360 camera coming in clutch right here. Easy in the park, easy off, and I have arrived to the grocery store, which is probably the place that you'll be taking this truck more often than you'd like. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on this Tahoe, we've got a ton of coverage. And if you're doing a little cross shopping, we also have a Yukon coming in two weeks. So we'll be doing the whole suite of videos on that one as well. That's going to be the big fancy boy Denali Ultimate. Uh, yeah, kind of a different deal than this one. But I, I think this RST is cool. And typically I'd poo-poo something like this. But hey, uh, I'm, I'm kind of about it. I kind of like it. So thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next one. I am Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, 6.2 on.